As always, I'd like to thank OSHA, the agency that has provided us with these photographs and presentations, in order for me to convey the message and lessons learned to you. I want to give credit where credit's due. So again, thank you, OSHA. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the photographs that OSHA has provided us and go over the feedback and provide a little bit of commentary on some struck by hazards germane to the construction industry. With that, let's look at this first photograph and see if you recognize any hazards. So what we have is it looks like we have a backhoe operator and we have a nearby worker with uh, close proximity to that backhoe. Now what do you think the hazard is here? Well, let's look at OSHA's commentary. I'm going to guess swing radius. And that would be correct. So OSHA's commentary is for employees to avoid struck by hazards by not working within the swing radius of heavy equipment. What a lot of companies will do is they'll actually provide a barricade, whether it's a soft barricade or a hard barricade, that they will provide a barricade to prevent workers from going within that swing radius of a backhoe, a crane, or anything else that could rotate without real warning to an employee. What hazard do you see here with this employee cutting? Well, let's look at the OSHA commentary. Let's see what OSHA's chief complaint is regarding this particular operation. OSHA says, grinding or striking materials that can create flying object hazards is kind of dangerous. And they're right. This worker is protected by equipment, guarding, and face shield, but should have safety glasses and goggles underneath. And that's really important because these face shields are not really rated in the same way for safety purposes anyway, as your ANSI Z87 safety glasses. So keep that in mind. So what OSHA again is getting at here is that there's some potential for flying particles or objects to get into this employee's eyes. And again, OSHA just looks at the potential. A lot of you might, may say, well, this employee is protected enough. Well, not really, because when we evaluate for potential, we're always looking at what could possibly happen, not what will happen. We're not fortune tellers, so we say, well, there's potential, so we should protect the employee. And that's kind of how we approach a lot of these safety issues. This one cracks me up every time. I just chuckle. You can't make this up. I'm not that creative. This is a real picture, and we have a wrecking ball. And... We have an operator swinging the wrecking ball in very close proximity to the cab. Now, that is bad for all kinds of reasons, and let's look at the commentary for Moshe. The wrecking ball is loosely attached to the arm. It could come loose and strike the operator's cab. Yes, that is correct. And the other comment is a work could be struck by the wrecking ball hit or run over by the excavator. That's absolutely true. So although we might find a little humor in some of these photographs, especially this one, the comments from Moshe are apt, they are correct, and I do agree. There is a significant hazard here, and someone could likely get hurt from a similar scenario. What kind of struck by hazards do you see in this particular photo? Well, what's interesting to me is a lot of employees never look up. Now, there is a lot of danger up and upwards. So when you're on a construction site or when you're on any other particular job site, if you're outside of construction, look up and look at all the danger that is above you that you might not see otherwise. If you look up here, pretend you're one of these employees and you're just moseying along down below and you don't look up well if you were to look up you would see that there's an individual working on the roof with tools that if dropped could potentially hit you in the head creating a struck by hazard 
let's look at the OSHA commentary. No head protection, like a hard hat, and workers are exposed to struck by hazards from falling objects. Now, I can't stress this enough. There is always potential for falling objects when we have people working overhead. It is a humongous concern. There have been countless fatalities due to dropped tools um, from coast to coast in every state. It's a huge issue, and there's a lot of danger. So if you're out there, look up. Do not work under anybody that is working overhead of you. Move out of the way. Find something else to do. And again, uh, never, never stand under a suspended load as well. If you have somebody hoisting or using a crane to suspend a load, don't stand under it. If anything can fall on you, that's bad. So get out of the way and be a little bit more aware of your surroundings. Let's go ahead and move on. This is a really, really good one. Um, a lot of people don't realize that gas cylinders, especially compressed gas cylinders like oxygen tanks, acetylene tanks, create a humongous struck by hazard, especially when they're being traveled and moved in such a way as you see here, because the regulators on the top of these compressed gas cylinders break very easily when dropped. They're just not meant to have any kind of brute force placed on them. So what they do is if the regulators are severed or, or broken or ruptured in any way, these compressed gas cylinders can become rockets, and I mean rocket. These, like a acetylene tanks, for example, have been known to go through brick walls. If you don't believe me, seek out a video by those Mythbusters for acetylene compressed gas cylinders. And what you're going to find is that they found that that is not a myth, that compressed gas cylinders do indeed go through brick walls. So keep that in mind. These are very, very dangerous. So if it'll go through a brick wall, imagine what it would do to you. So OSHA's commentary. Unsecured gas cylinders are being transported, exposing workers to struck by hazard from flying projectiles. Absolutely correct. Wrong way to transport these compressed gas cylinders. And there's a lot of other issues there too, but We'll leave it there for now, and we're moving on. All right, you remember I just told you, you will never stand underneath the suspended load. It happens a lot, and a lot of people get hurt as a result. Equipment fails. Wire ropes, slings, they fail after prolonged use, especially when we evaluate how little a lot of people inspect rigging equipment throughout the industry. It's a huge problem. Well, let's look at the OSHA commentary. OSHA says avoid working below suspended overhead materials. The worker exposed to falling and swinging struck by hazards here. So think about how we could kind of mitigate this hazard. What could we do? Well, a common industry standard or practice for this kind of scenario is to use a tagline. And if you're unfamiliar with what a tagline is, a tagline is just a rope. It might have a metal hook on the end, or it could be any other contraption, but essentially it's a rope that's tied off to part of the load, and then the employee is able to stand back from a distance and try to keep the load balanced or under control, or especially from swinging. So keep that in mind. might be very helpful for you to look into taglines if you're not using them already. Recognize any hazards here? Well, we have quite a few problems here, but I'm just going to go over the common one. So we have a, a company here that looks like they're working on a highway project of some sort. So what we have a problem with here specifically, we have two individuals not wearing an ANSI rated retro reflective vest for public highway work. And that's an absolute requirement. You'll see people working in road construction, and they'll almost always have a retro reflective vest on. It's an absolute requirement. It's essential to protect safety of the employees, and it, what it really does is it helps people from getting hit by traffic because if 
an employee is more visible. That really helps others to identify them and possibly avoid hitting a construction worker. All right, here we have a crane. And a crane is lifting uh, a little platform there. And we have several workers on the crane trying to work around or near this particular suspended load. So as you know from your experience, when we lift things, sometimes they shift, other times they rotate, and as a result of those kind of movements, we know that employees are going to be subject to the potential for struck by hazards. So that being said, let's look at the OSHA commentary. OSHA says, stay clear of loads that are suspended or about to be suspended, which create struck by hazards from falling or swinging objects. If control of the load by a worker is necessary, then a tagline should be used. Here's another favorite of mine. The wrecking ball, number one all-time favorite OSHA photograph. Number two is this photograph. So we have two employees working on the, in the close proximity with each other on opposite sides of this wall using power actuated nail guns. Now it just doesn't get better than this. So obviously you see that there's great potential for one employee to injure the other. So OSHA's comment on this particular uh, photograph is that Power actuated tools can create flying object struck by hazards. Never drive into easily penetrated materials when workers are on the other side. So I want you to think, how could these two employees work a little safer? Think about that. Could one of them move? Could they find different areas to work? Yes, they probably could. 